you had the opportunity to name a city, would you give it your dog's name? If yes, then you wouldn't be the first. As a 25-year-old man did the same thing, he was Alexander the Great, who conquered half of the world. Before we start, what would you call this little king? Royals have a very different lifestyle from ordinary people. However, they both have one thing in common, the love for dogs. Royal families and dogs have a very long history together. They had all sorts of tasks. They protected their emperors and ceremonies. They were in the front line of wars, assisted during hunting, or just accompanied royals in times of peace. An ideal royal dog is a combination of intelligence, agility, strength, and loyalty. One such breed is the Greyhound, honored because of his agility. They're one of the oldest members of royal families in history, dating back to ancient Egypt. These dogs were the favorite breed of the Egyptian aristocracy, who used them in hunting or as companions, while pharaohs even mummified them and were buried with them. It is a known fact that Alexander the Great's dog was a Greyhound and his features were perfect to make him a participant in military campaigns. In the Renaissance, King James I appreciated this breed and found him suitable for hare hunting. Also, these dogs were a part of the British royal family in the 19th century, and as the portraits of that time show, the husband of Queen Victoria had a greyhound that accompanied him everywhere. Other royal figures who adored this breed were Cleopatra and Elizabeth I of England, who used this breed to run races, which is why it is still called the sport of queens. Shih Tzu, honored because of his looks and warmth. Many centuries ago, Tibetans sent the royal Chinese court some dogs that looked like small lions, and it's thought that the breeders used them to develop the Shih Tzu breed. During the Ming and Manchu dynasties, these dogs were considered to be the exclusive property of the royal yard. Emperors mainly used them as bed warmers and usually put them on their feet to generate heat. Queen Duwazir Su He, who ruled the Qing dynasty for years, considered these dogs holy, and if someone out of the kingdom owned a dog of this breed, he was punished by death. After that, a dog of this breed was given as a gift to the British and the Netherlands monarchies, and just like that, the Shih Tzu passed to the Chinese borders. Great Pyrenees, honored because of his strength. With his majestic appearance, it's easy to believe that this dog had a royal past. However, the Great Pyrenees were working dogs in the Pyrenees Mountains for centuries, but only in the 17th century, French aristocracy ruled by King Louis XIV discovered this dog and took him as a guard of the Chateau of Lords. These dogs had a developed sense of smell and a sharp sight Therefore, they were considered equal to two people for guarding the castle and were called the Royal Dog of France. In the 19th century, even Queen Victoria of Britain had a Great Pyrenees called Gavis, which she received as a gift. This dog became so beloved for her that she ordered a famous painter to create a portrait of him. Pekingese, because of his size and holiness. These dogs have been bred for being a companion of the elite and Chinese monks. While common people weren't allowed to keep them, they even had to bow to them since they were considered a holy breed. It was believed that in temples and palaces, these dogs would keep away demons and bad spirits. After the emperor's death, his dog would get killed as it was thought that he would protect the owner in the afterlife. The most adored feature of this breed was its size because according to the legends, a lion fell in love with the butterfly and Buddha decreased the size of the lion and increased that of the butterfly. The result was the Pekingese. During the Opium War in 1960, when Britain invaded the Imperial Palace, the guards were ordered to kill every dog of this breed so that the British wouldn't take them. Fortunately, five of them were saved and were sent to England. The smallest of them was presented before Queen Victoria, and he became the favorite breed of the English aristocracy. Akita, honored because of her loyalty. Although this breed was primarily used as a companion dog during hunting, its valuable traits of loyalty and fierceness made him a royal dog in the medieval times. The Emperor of Japan and his samurai soldiers used Akitas for guarding people and properties. 
In the 17th and 18th centuries, these dogs could be owned only by shoguns for hunting bear and other large game. It is said that these dogs were so respected that they had their own houses and servants. In 1899, the Emperor Tasho got photographed with his Akita and declared this breed a national dog. At the beginning of the 20th century, these dogs became available for anyone who wanted to own them. Japanese Chin, honored because of his charm. Despite its name, this breed was specifically bred to accompany the ladies of the royal palace and to keep warm the laps of the Chinese aristocracy. It is believed that these dogs were given as gifts to Japanese emperors by Chinese or Korean rulers. And in contrast to the other breeds that were used for hunting, herding, or guarding, their only job was to entertain and charm the elite. A big fan of this breed was Queen Alexandra, who used to collect them from Japan, and it's said that she had 261 dogs of this breed. Beagle, honored because of his voice. This ancient breed has a not so well-known origin. However, new information proves its royal past. These dogs were brought to England by William the Conqueror, and it was reported that King Henry XII of England has owned Gloves the Beagle that he used for hunting which was so small that he could easily fit on a leather glove. On the other side, Queen Elizabeth called her dogs singing beagles because of their melodious voice and used them to entertain her royal guests. Bijan Frise, honored because of his kindness. This breed is related to the aristocracy since the 13th century, when it was used as a companion dog by kings and queens of Spain, Italy, and France. King Henry III of France loved his Bichon so much that he would go everywhere with the basket of Bichons. Soon, this became a trend, and every lady of the royal court started to use this as a transportation tool for their little puppies. After the rule of Napoleon III, the interest in this breed decreased, and it was considered an ordinary dog and was primarily used by circus performers. In the 14th century, this breed became a favorite of the Spanish emperors and painters too. For example, the most well-known Spanish painter Goya included Bichons in several works. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, honored because of his playfulness. These dogs were exclusively bred to accompany kings and elite English families. According to the legends, Queen Mary of Scots was executed with her cavalier. Also, King Charles II, from whom the breed took its name, had many cavaliers as companions during his royal life, and he used to take them everywhere, including the council rooms, church, and on his daily walks. According to his biography, this king was more preoccupied with the breeding of the Spaniels than with Britain's ruling. Saluki, honored because of his speed. It's no wonder that these dogs were called Persian Greyhounds when it's known that they resemble this breed greatly and have a similar history. Salukis are one of the oldest breeds and there is evidence to suggest that they were the most respected dogs by Arab kings since ancient times. Because of their speed, the Saluki has been primarily used for gazelle hunting, whereas in England for hares. According to tradition, a Saluki was never sold but was given as a gift to other kings, other important figures, or, as shocking as it may sound, in some cases, he was exchanged for a woman. Here are two other videos that we have prepared just for you. See ya.